To buy or sell anything needs two parties, a buyer, a seller. So how is it that you're able to buy or sell cryptocurrency on a decentralized exchange like Uniswap almost instantly? The short answer is liquidity pools. Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am Eve and on this channel is where I bring you predictive analysis, research and tutorials in the easiest way possible on the internet to help contribute to the resources you need as you walk your way through this vast world of coins and tokens. If that's the type of content you find interesting, click the like button and subscribe to the channel with your notifications on so that you get the next video while it's still hot. Now, you may want to use the link to our 10,000 member Discord and Telegram channel in the description for in the moment forecasts, trade signals, or chat with like minded people. I can assure you it's a lovely and welcoming community. I also have links to my favorite exchanges in the description as well, so you may want to use that. So, what is a liquidity pool? To understand this, we have to understand what liquidity is. To simplify, liquidity refers to the ease at which an asset can be bought or sold in the market without affecting its market price. You can see it as a measure of how quickly an asset can be converted into cash without causing a significant impact on its market value. Assets that are highly liquid are easy to sell or convert into cash, such as cash itself because, well, you can easily convert cash into cash government bonds, blue chip stocks, and cryptocurrencies. On the other hand, illiquid assets such as real estate or private equity may take a longer time to sell or may require additional effort and cost to convert them into cash, which is why you can't just readily sell your house today if you decided to sell it. Liquidity is such an important concept in finance because it affects the ability of individuals and institutions to manage their cash flow and meet their financial obligations. Now that you understand what liquidity is, I assume you might have a clue on what a liquidity pool might be. If you do, let me know in the comments. And hey guys, I would really appreciate if you can like comment or even share this video with a friend. It will help to push the video further by the YouTube algorithm. So in DeFi or decentralized finance, a liquidity pool is a smart contract. Now, if you have not watched my video on what a smart contract is, I will leave the link to it in the description. But the TLDR here is a smart contract is basically a code that is written to automatically enforce or execute the terms of an agreement between two or more parties. You can think of it as an intermediary, just in this case, not a human, that ensures an agreement is executed. In decentralized finance, a liquidity pool is a smart contract that contains a certain amount of two or more different tokens, which are used to facilitate trading on a decentralized exchange. These pools are created and maintained by liquidity providers who deposit an equal value of each token in the pool in exchange for liquidity pool tokens. Usually in the centralized exchange, instead of a liquidity pool, we have an order book and traditionally, traders of both sides, that's buyers or sellers, place an order to buy or sell. These are called limit orders. So when you place a buy or sell order at a certain price that is not the market price, your order sits in an order book and this provides liquidity, hence you pay lower fees for doing so as you are creating liquidity. You will see this as a maker fee on your exchanges. Take a fee is when you buy or sell at market price, by the way. So traditionally, buyers or sellers would place their buy or sell orders. And when their set prices coincide, their transaction goes through. At least this is how it would normally work, but we do have the market maker who is there to provide liquidity for the market. So at the other end of your trade may not be a regular person like you. One of the most famous market makers was uh, Alameda Research. Now, something you can quickly understand here is that the market orders work differently because when you buy with a market order, what you are doing is you are buying that asset at the price at which sellers are willing to sell at that particular time and which with volatile assets like crypto may end up to be a different price than you actually intended as price may drastically change in a second and your transaction will still be executed. So you could end up buying at 103 
instead of a hundred just as an example. So I hope you understand what a liquidity pool is on decentralized exchanges and how different it is from centralized exchanges. Instead of other books, we have liquidity pools that have an equal value of two or more assets. Say a trader, John, wants to buy or sell a token on a decentralized exchange. Let's call the pair asset A and B. Our trader John can do so by using the liquidity pool. So basically this is what you do to buy or sell any of your favorite coins or tokens on Uniswap. The token price of assets, say asset A and B, is determined by the ratio of the two assets in that pool. If asset A is bought more than B, it will decrease its supply in the pool and thus its price will increase. Since it's a pool of two distinct assets A and B, the supply of token B will increase as many traders keep depositing B for token A, thereby increasing its supply and thus decreasing its price relative to A. So you can see this as a balance. If this one goes up, this one will go down. And if this one goes down, this one will go up and vice versa. You get the point. We will explain what actually ensures that this happens in a moment. This can easily be seen when you buy your favorite micro or nano caps. As you buy, say, a token, its supply in the liquidity pool of that token and Ethereum decreases, thereby increasing its price as more of ETH is deposited, aka swapped for that token. Conversely, if you felt like selling, you'll swap the token back for ETH, increasing its supply and thus reducing its price. Very easy so far, yes? I mean, I'm doing a very good job. Now, this might have been a very simplistic way of explaining how this actually works, but let's dig in deeper to fully understand the mathematics of it. Like, we really want to know what is happening behind the scenes. Most liquidity pools use an automated market maker or AMM. So what the hell is that you might ask? In simple terms, an automated market maker or AMM is a protocol that uses mathematical algorithms to automatically determine the prices of assets based on demand and supply. Most AMMs use the constant product automated market maker formula, which is X times Y equals to K. X and Y being the quantities of the assets, not the value, and K being the constant. The formula ensures that the value of a token in a liquidity pool increases as its supply in that pool decreases. For example, say you have a pool of two assets, A and B, 500 tokens of A and 500 tokens of B. Say the value of one token of asset A is $2. Therefore, the total value of asset A tokens is $1,000 because, well, one token is $2 and we have 500 tokens. Assume that this is also true for asset B. So we'd have $1,000 for asset A and $1,000 for asset B, each token costing $2. According to the constant product automated market maker formula, we have to multiply the quantity of asset A and B to get the constant. This constant, which is K, is the reference point to ensure an increase or decrease in price if the supply of A or B is reduced or increased. So we'd have 500 multiplied by 500 equals to 250,000. So the constant in this pool is 250,000. So 500 for A and 500 for asset B and the constant being 250,000. Say a trader John brings 10 tokens of asset A to swap for tokens of asset B. How many tokens of asset B will Trader John receive? Let's dig into it. Upon the swap, we will now have 510 tokens A and 500 tokens B. 
You might be like, well, the pool will just give him 10 tokens of asset B and be left with 490 tokens since, well, assets A and B have the same dollar value. But here is how it will actually happen. The AMM will divide 250,000, which is the constant, by 510 tokens of asset A. The resulting figure from this division will tell the AMM how much tokens of asset B should be left after when it credits Trader John with tokens of asset B. Don't worry, you will get it if you do not get it by now. So the calculation will go like so. 250,000 divided by 510. So 510 is the total tokens of A after our Trader John brought 10 tokens of A for tokens of asset B. So 250,000 divided by 510 which will give us 490.196. Pay attention to the little figures in crypto. Now, this might look like it's basically the same, but with bigger numbers, it begins to be very significant. Always remember that in the world of finance, very small numbers matter a lot. I mean, when I lose a dollar sometimes, I feel the pain because do that long enough and it becomes very significant. So Trader John will be credited with 500 minus 490.196, which is equals to 9.80. 500 in this equation being the amount of tokens of asset B and 490.196 being the amount that should be left after the AMM rewards John with tokens of asset B. So Trader John will be rewarded with 9.80 tokens. Now, remember that both tokens of asset A and B had an equal value of $2 each. And Trader John's initial 10 tokens of asset A, which he brought to swap, was $20. And now he has received 9.80 tokens of asset B, which has a dollar value of 19.60. So John is losing money here. Why is he losing money? Why is he receiving less? Let's explain. Because asset B is getting more expensive as John and everyone else buys token B. Now, to understand how pricing works, we need to look at this analogy. We have 500 tokens of asset A and 500 tokens of asset B. The pricing for each token is $2. Therefore, the price of asset A and B is $1,000 each. To calculate the price change after our dear Mr. John came along, we have to divide $1,000 by 510 tokens of asset A. $1,000 being the initial dollar value and 510 being the new supply of A, which will give us 1.96 cents. So asset A has gotten cheaper here as more tokens have been added to the pool. To calculate the price change of asset B, we will of course divide the initial cost of all tokens of asset B by the new supply after giving Dr. John his tokens. So $1,000 divided by 490.196 is equals to 2.04 cents. Now remember we had $2 for each token of asset B and now it is $2.04. So asset B tokens have become more expensive. So you see that the tokens of asset B have increased in value and that of asset A have dropped in value as our Dr. John exchanged some tokens A for tokens B. These prices can skyrocket and plummet dramatically based on how much is taken in or out of this pool. In our asset A and B pool now, we have 510 tokens and 490.196 respectively. If we use the constant product automated market maker formula here and multiply the two, we will get that initial constant of 250,000 back. Hopefully, you understand. Now, trading fees, which are small percentages of your trade, are distributed proportionally to liquidity providers in the liquidity pool. Proportionally here, because if the liquidity pool of asset A and B is worth, say, $1,000 for a start, it means you will have $500 worth of token A and $500 worth of token B. 
However, there might be only five liquidity providers in this pool and one liquidity provider may have provided $250 worth of A and $250 worth of B. This will in turn mean that this particular liquidity provider will take half of the fees generated in this liquidity pool. As the pool becomes larger or gains more liquidity providers, his stake in this pool decreases so he will take less in fees generated because well he won't be providing half of the liquidity in said pool anymore. This added liquidity, if you followed from my definition of what liquidity is, liquidity refers to the ease at which an asset can be bought or sold in the market without affecting its market. So, simply, it will require more capital to move the price of asset A or B as the liquidity between both assets increase. This explains why the price impact of your buy or sell of your favorite nano cap can be very significant if you buy or sell say $10,000 worth of the asset but will not be significant if you did the same with say Mr. Bitcoin. You will always see price impact when you want to sell your nano cap but try selling $100,000 worth of BTC on Binance, nothing will happen. Now, note what I did there, I mentioned Binance, not because I want you to use my Binance referral link in the description of this video, which if you did will probably make my day, but because the liquidity of BTC to USDT is greater on Binance as it is the largest exchange by trading volume, your selling price impact on Binance will not be as significant as it would be if you sold your say 1000 BTC in some small startup centralized exchange. This is why prices of some coins may differ with different exchanges because the liquidity may be different. So the price impact can be say 1% on Binance but 1.5% or even more on some smaller exchange. Arbitrage traders take advantage of this and buy on smaller exchanges, bring to sell on say a bigger exchange which is also risky because well the price might change as you rush to sell your BTC on Binance. Some people actually make a lot of money with this though. Liquidity pools are a key component of decentralized finance because they provide liquidity for trading without the need of a centralized intermediary such as a traditional exchange. They also allow for more efficient price discovery and can provide higher returns for liquidity providers than traditional savings accounts or other investment options. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. All the links to my socials and exchanges I use are in the description. I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. If you can, share the video with a friend. Until the next video, stay safe.